What's up, everybody? It is your boy Bad Dog here at the New York Giants post game video. As always, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up because it does help out the video huge. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. Appreciate you all uh, clicking on the video and watching, of course, taking the time to watch the video. Uh, the last month or so was a lot of fun. You know, Tommy DeVito, hey, Tommy, the craze of the NFL. You know, all good things have to come to an end in the honeymoon phase. Uh, Tommy DeVito and the New York Giants obviously ended today as they get demolished by the New Orleans Saints by the score of 24-6. It was very strange going into the game that they were. In one hand, it was a Giants fan. You could look at the scoreboard for postseason seeding and maybe getting into the postseason at the same time that the scoreboard is maybe getting a top five draft pick. Very, very weird year um, for the Giants. But I know some people are going to be mad that the Giants won these three games and screwed up their quarterback pick. And, you know, there's going to be guys that are saying, ah, meaningless and this and that. And I, I Listen, I understand. I'm not going to get mad one way or the other. My emotions were kind of gone after we lost to Seattle. I'm just, whatever will be, will be. You know, it sucks that we lost. I'm never going to root for my team to lose. It's not in me. But at the same time, if they lose, get better draft pick. I'm not going to be upset over it. Not at this time of the year. The Giants ran into a better team today. I mean, the defense had played fantastic the last few games. They had 12 turnovers. They were getting a lot of pressure. And today, New Orleans just beat the shit out of us up front on both sides of the football. We got no pressure on Derek Carr at all. Pinnock came in there with a safety blitz and got there the one time. We couldn't get there with four guys. Nobody was close to Derek Carr. Nobody breathed on Derek Carr. And if we were going to win the game, we were going to have to put pressure on Derek Carr. He is not a very good quarterback under pressure. And the Saints offensive line did a fantastic job of dominating us. They ran the ball effectively. Carr had all day to throw. And he found some guys. Adoree Jackson had a horrible game today. And on offense, they were just fantastic. And on defense, the New, York, the New Orleans Saints hadn't given up a touchdown drive in the last 23 drives. We knew going into the game they had a very good pass defense. But the inability for the Giants to run and the offensive line, which was absolutely pathetic today. And, I mean, it's been pathetic. This is nothing new. This isn't just an outlier game for the line. We know the offensive line has been terrible all year. Last week, actually, against the Packers, the Packers had pressure on uh, DeVito, I think, 48% of the time. And he avoided a sack. Today he got sacked numerous times. Justin Pugh looked terrible today. One thing I'll never understand about the Giants, and again, the absence of a running game completely uh, kills the Giants. And there's no question about this. And people got on my case, and I know, I understand people love Saquon Barkley, and, and I get it. Right? I get people love their players. I am not a player guy. I say this all the time, man. I root for the logo. I root for the laundry. I root for this. This, this is, this is the only name in that jersey that matters to me. This, that's it. Do I have my favorite players? Of course. Barkley's one of my favorite players. And nine carries for fourteen yards. And I'm going to be staunch on this. I, I have a hard time understanding the fans that tell you this offensive line sucks. And it's not Barkley's fault, but yet they want to give Barkley a ton of money. Like, you can't have it both ways. If the offensive line is bad, you have to put the money in the offensive line because I don't care who your running back is. If you can't block, he ain't going to do anything. Barkley's one of the more talented running backs in the league, but you see today when teams decide, you know what, we got to stop Barkley. We can't let Barkley go off. We have to make Tommy DeVito beat us. And that's what you do. You shut down Saquon Barkley. And it doesn't really matter. Who our quarterback is, everybody knows the Giants are not the best receivers. They know the offensive line is terrible, and they know if the Giants are one-dimensional on third down nine, they don't have much of a chance. So, of course, your goal is going to be to shut down Saquon Barkley. And it doesn't matter who the running back is. It doesn't matter what team you are. If you can't run the ball, you're in trouble. If you're in third and long, you're in trouble, especially when your offensive line is as bad as the New York Giants are. So, for me, everybody wants to address the offensive line, but somehow you want to bring back Barkley. That's almost impossible to do. It'll be interesting to see what Joe Shane does. I have no problem bringing Barkley back here. You want to tag him again? I'm fine with that. I'm not giving Barkley three years, 40, 42 million. It's not happening. I feel like if the Giants are going to do that, they would have done it last year. But 
Again, that's what the offseason's for. We can sit here and speculate whatever needs to be done. There's a lot of problems with the Giants. There is just a ton of problems. And when you're winning, everything is good. And when you're losing, everything is bad. And that's usually the way it goes um, in the NFL. You know, it is what it is. People start telling you Tommy DeVito is terrible. And they'll sit there and talk about how Mike Kafka needs to be fired. And, you know, the offensive line is pathetic. And all, is whatever. Kayvon Thibodeau sucks. You're going to hear that all week about Kayvon disappeared. Kayvon's trash. And, and I already know what's what's going to happen. I, I get it. I've been a Giants fan for a long time. And I've been on social media for a long time now. And I understand how the fan base uh, reacts to things like this. And, you know, um, I've certainly been one to overreact to things as well. But the way this year has gone, I'm not – I'm not overreacting to anything. I'm not going to get all worked up uh, one way or the other uh, about the team. It was a disappointing game without question. I felt like the Saints were a team that we could compete with. I felt like that was a team that we could beat. And as I said at the beginning of the stream with Chris, the Giants are that team that, you know, they build you up, they get you pumped up, and then they, you know, knock you down to the ground, and then you're on the ground for a while, and then they slowly pick you up only to knock you down again. I told my wife before the game today, I said, you know, I hate it. I'm actually excited to watch the Giants play. And the last time I was excited to watch them play was week one against Dallas, and they lost 40 to nothing. And this is just what the team does. You can't have nice things here at the Giants. You can't. I don't think anybody expected Tommy DeVito to be Pat Mahomes or to win out. It was nice while it lasted, but at the end of the day, he's an undrafted free agent doing the best that he can behind a really bad offensive line and behind a team that's not very good. There's a reason we were 2-8 and eight before they went on the three-game winning streak. It's not just because of Daniel Jones. It's not just because of injury. It's not just because of the coaching staff. It's not just because of the lack of wide receivers. It's not, you know, it's it's because the whole team's bad. You don't, you don't lose eight out of your first 10 games because you got one bad player. You know, you you lose eight of your first ten games because as a team overall, you're just not more talented than the other teams, and you make bad plays, and you make bad penalties, and you make bad calls, and you do bad things, and you give up big plays, and you're unable to sustain drives. And there's a lot that goes on with the Giants, which is why they were two and eight, and you know now they're five and nine. So. Uh, it is what it is. They ran into a better team today. It sucks. I was hoping they won. I mean, I always hope they win. But I wanted to see them, you know, come out here and, and beat the Saints and, and make that game on Christmas an incredible game. Uh, or, you know, I shouldn't say incredible, a meaningful game against Philadelphia. But I don't think anybody in the right mind even had the Giants come out and beat New Orleans. We're going to think we were going to beat Philadelphia. Uh, I couldn't see that happening. Uh, Philadelphia is 10-3. and three. And they're still one of the best teams in the league. They lost to, in my opinion, the two best teams in the NFC. So, you know, their offensive line, their defensive line are really good. It's going to be a very long day. I'm glad I'm not streaming that game. It's on Christmas, so I'm just going to sit there and, you know, enjoy my uh, enjoy my time. I'll watch the game, but at least I won't have to, um, you know, I'll have good food and good company there to, to kind of ease the pain of it yeah, regardless, um, you know. It was a nice run, man. Listen, I I still love what Tommy DeVito did. I still love the kid. He's got a lot of toughness, a lot of moxies. He, he's definitely exceeded all expectations without question. He certainly missed some throws today. He aired me out some throws. He, you know, he had a receiver open, held on to the ball a little bit too long. He didn't really do that against the Packers. But, of course, when you get down and you're trying to make something happen down the field, that's going to happen. You credit the Saints defense. Most of the time you look down the field – they had it covered, and they were getting pressure pretty quickly. And no quarterback's going to survive that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Tommy DeVito's a third-string guy. Now, going into next week, there'll be all this question of, hey, you know, Tommy DeVito, the, the ride's over, the honeymoon's over, he's not good, Tyrod's healthy, does Tyrod Taylor start against Philadelphia? And my answer to that is no. I think that you made your bed now. I think you got a lie in it. I think that you – Go with Tommy Vito the rest of the year. Um, not so much because you, you maybe think he gives you the best option to win or not. I think you need to know if he is your backup next year. Tyrod will not be here. I don't know what the Giants are going to do in the draft. My heart still tells me that Shane and Dable will go quarterback one way or the other, um, depending on where they draft. At this point, you look at those two Eagle games, you're probably going to lose those two games. And the Rams are not great, but they're not bad. And, 
you know, who knows? So we could either be six and 11, we could be five and 12, but I don't, I don't think the giants are going to finish with eight wins. So it depends on where they draft. Joe Shane wants quarterback. He'll find a way to get it. If he doesn't, he won't go that he won't force the pick. I'm going to trust in the GM to do his job. And that's all that we can do as fans. We can sit here and speculate. We can get mad at the results. We can get mad at what we think Joe Shane's going to do. But at the end of the day, nobody that is not in that clubhouse or locker room or front office. I shouldn't even say locker room. Locker room don't know what's going to happen. Nobody in the front office knows what they want to do. Joe Shane knows what he wants to do. They're the ones with the plan. And they have to do what they can to execute the plan. A lot of Gettleman guys going next year. A lot of cap space. And, you know, just got to trust him. I felt like he's drafted very good so far and got a lot of work to do, and hopefully he can get it done. The honeymoon phase is over. It was a nice ride, no question about that. But the Giants get smacked back to reality today. They lose 24-6. to six. Uh, The NFC South is crazy. The Falcons lost to the Panthers. Don't know how the hell that happens. The Buccaneers win today. The Saints win today. So... It'll be interesting to see how the NFC South works out. But, uh, yeah, disappointing loss today. But, you know, what can you do? That's just it's the Giants, baby. Like I said, they, they they get you excited and you they immediately knock you back down. Can't have nice things with the Giants. But congratulations to the Saints. Saints, they just they beat us. And there's no excuses here. I mean, they were the better team without question. It showed. They dominated the line of scrimmage. And they, this is – it's where you win football games. We can, we can talk about quarterbacks and running backs and everything else all we want, but at the end of the day, man, you can't win at the line of scrimmage. You're not going to win very many football games. And for most of the season, the Giants have not won at the line of scrimmage. And for the better part of the last few years, the Giants have not won at the line of scrimmage. Somehow that has to change. And until it does, we're going to be sitting here in December every year talking about the draft or October, whenever the hell we start talking about the draft, that's going to happen. And Joe Sheen's got to fix that, and hopefully he does. And um, We'll see what happens. Anyway, that is all I got in this video. As always, I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'm going to go eat some food and watch the Cowboys and Bills because it should be a good one. And I will see you next time. Uh, once again, the final score, the Saints 24, Giants 6. And we'll see you next time. Bandy Dizzle, and I'm out. Peace.